Hi everyone, I hope you're all okay. We've got our year three art lesson today where we'll hopefully be bringing the outdoors inside and exploring our theme of the great outdoors. So you know we've done lots of printing and um, we did some example of mono printing um, and then we also looked at specific artists last week um, on our Wednesday lesson and I know some people did it when they got home um, which was brilliant as well to see you sketching those designs out. So today we're going to be doing some printing or making some collages using the outdoors. You'll need for this session a pencil and some plain paper. You'll need some leaves, sticks and flowers which I'll explain in a minute and then paint and water which is optional um, if you have them and if they're easy to pick. If not there is an alternative option um, that you'll be able to do as well. So today you shouldn't need your home learning books, you'll just need a plain piece of paper. If you don't have any plain paper, then you will be able to just use some lined paper. If on this you can put um, the date, Wednesday the 28th of April, and the lesson art, and then underneath you'll be able to do your artwork. So our learning objective today, we are learning to explore what the outdoors has to offer in art so that we can practice printing techniques using outdoor objects. We'll be exploring the outdoors to find resources for our artwork. We'll be practicing printing with outdoor objects if we have um, the resources. And then you'll be able to use a variety of leaves, flowers, uh, sticks, outdoor materials to create your artwork. Mini retrieval then. So this is looking back at last lesson. Who created the designs? And can you remember? Can you think about how they might have been created? Um, if you can remember or if not, have a think and think about what our topic is at the moment in art. If you'd like to pause this video for one minute, have a think about who it is and how they were created. So those designs were of course created by William Morris um, and he did lots of different things. He used to make stained glass windows um, but most infamously he's made known for wa uh, wallpaper and making designs of floral patterns. So that's just patterns that are inspired by flowers and plants um, and these were repeated many times using block printing techniques. So just like most wallpaper that we'll see um, it's often a repeating pattern and this is easy to create using our block printing so we talked about um, on a small scale if we were block printing onto a piece of paper we'd have a block with a, a design sketched into it and um, we put it into the ink pad and then we would print on our pattern using the block just like that a lot easier method and a lot quicker um, and they would do it on large, huge pieces of paper to make pattern wallpaper. And it would be on a much larger scale. And this process would later improve through advances in technology using printing machines and synthetic coloured inks. So a bit like a printer at home when you print off some work, a piece of work. A bit like that, but on a huge scale and printing off the wallpaper. Um, but it all came about from the small scale block printing and using the inspiration from flowers and plants and that's what we are effectively hoping to do um, and the outcome of our artwork will be. How do we think then that we could use printing to represent our theme of the great outdoors so different printing techniques how could we use them to represent our theme? Think about as well, is there any natural supplies that we could use to create and represent our theme really well? Just let you have a minute to think about that. What about then, how might we use these that have been collected from outdoors for printing? How could we use leaves or sticks or flowers, natural resources that we have from outside that we can collect? Yeah, so we can hopefully use those um, for a printing and hopefully like we did when we did with our rollers, we can hopefully um, put on some paint or ink paint and watercolour paint onto the backs of these and they should print a lovely pattern. 
So these ones here are really good examples of printing and of using leaves um, to print because leaves aren't flat. They're not completely flat. Um, they um, have really lovely detailed indentations on the back of them, almost they, like the veins. And those that's what's really picked up by the paint so that when it's printed on, if you can see in all the pictures, the veins really stand out. And this picture down the bottom here of this man lifting it up with the tweezers is a really good example of the stem of the leaf there and all the veins coming off it. It's not printed any of the bits in the middle. It's just printed those lovely details of the veins. And this here with the flowers on is a really creative idea um, of printing. And the flowers for this, um, we you would have to do something where you press the flowers. So you can do this easily at home. Um, you get a flower and you um, get it out so you set, make sure it's not got any, um, make sure it's a lovely and perfect flower. And then you'll put it um, in, beside, in between two pieces of paper and then you flatten it inside a book. So that and you leave it there for a day or so and once you take the flower out it's lovely and flat and then really easy to work with for printing um, because of course if your flower um, is not quite flat straight away it'll leave different printing marks at each point which is something artists might use but they like to have their leaves and everything really flat when they begin printing and this is something that we're going to do today then. So your first task I would like you to do, I would like you to go outside into your garden to collect some leaves, sticks and flowers. Now I have done the same um, and I'll show you what I've collected afterwards. Okay, but if you can go, just pause this video right now where you are, go outside into your garden um, or into the front lawn or you might have to um, ask maybe a parent to collect some leaves or something from over the way but hopefully we can all get some leaves from our garden or sticks flowers anything like that you might have some in the house and go outside you only need to collect a couple a couple of examples of each and then pause the video and then as soon as you're back in click play again and we'll be able to look at some different examples okay so Hopefully you've gone outside now to collect your different examples. So I have, I've just gone into my garden and I here I've collected two, um, a small and a big leaf. And on the back we've got the lovely veins here. I also collected a different leaf here, like almost a star shape. And the veins in the back are brilliant. It's very flimsy this one, but really good. It'd be really good for printing. Um, I also got another one here. Um, a different shape for you to see with all the veins on the back and then it also got some sticks to use and I've also got um, a flower that was on the floor I didn't actually pick the flower from the thing it unfortunately fallen on the floor so what I'm planning to use I'm not planning to use the whole flower because that'd be really difficult to print I'm planning to see if I can get any nice printing from the petals Okay, so there's what I've collected, and then hopefully I'll explain on the next slide what we're going to do. So, the next task, there's two options. If you have some paint and water, this is so that you can water the paint down, um, you'll be able to do the next task. If not, do not worry, because you can now go straight on to... Um, it's still classed as task two, but the alternative where you'll be looking at creating a outdoor themed collage. So you might have to go outside and collect some more if you've only collected a few examples um, of each, but you can create your own outdoor collage. OK, so if you're using paint, um, then we feel this is the right task that you want to be looking at. So we're going to use a bit of watered down paint. So I've got um, two sets of paint. I've got some gold paint here, which is just what I've got in the house. Um, and I've not watered it down too much. Notice how it doesn't drop off the brush, but you just want to make sure it's not really gloopy. 
So you just want to add a tiny, tiny bit of water. What I would suggest is less water than more. So in my green one here, unfortunately, I've actually put a bit too much water in. So it's still dripping off quite a bit. So my green might not work very well, unfortunately. But my gold will. Um, it is got all of my hands but it's painting so we will get a little bit messy unfortunately so you might want to make sure that your sleeves are rolled up so that you avoid getting any mess on yourself um, so you want to make sure you've got your paper I've just got two underneath just so that when I'm um, putting the paint onto the leaves um, they don't it doesn't get all over my work surface um, if you are unable to pin or use the pin or maybe it doesn't quite work for you then you can stick on to the next part if you want to and make your own collage. Okay, So I'm just going to briefly show you. So I'm going to choose this leaf here. Um, I have already had a little practice on it just to make sure that the paint was the right thickness and it worked, um, it worked I thought relatively well. It's not foolproof, it's not perfect um, but unfortunately um, and we're having to Try our best from home, aren't we? So I've just got my paint, a paintbrush, and I'm just applying on like a thick layer. And it's not too watery, it just soaks into the leaf. So sometimes it might depend on what leaves you've got. So these ones I got here, these ones didn't work very well, unfortunately. So I've had to go for this one. It's quite flimsy and um, it's a very soft material leaf, but that's why I'm saying if you have a go just like I am and then if it doesn't work too well you're always welcome to do the collage instead um, because unfortunately um, we don't all have the same um, trees in our back garden or we don't all have the same leaves unfortunately so if I could all give you a leaf that I've got I definitely would do so I'm just going to apply a little bit more paint here on the last section make sure it's all definitely covered best it can be and I've done that on the back and then all I'm going to do is just place it down anywhere on my piece of paper and basically just flatten it with my hand like this okay and to flatten it just like that and hopefully fingers crossed when I lift it up it might not be perfect but we should be able to see there we got some detail so I put it off and yeah, you can't see lots of detail, but we can see that it's definitely a leaf shape. Okay, and we can see that stem in the middle. And I'm going to have, I'm going to do the same one again. Um, I'm just going to coat it again in some more paint. And I'm just going to place it another area on my piece of paper. Okay, so... If you you have to be quite quick with putting your paint on, not quick that you're getting it you're getting it everywhere, but just so that you avoid the paint drying too quickly. That's why we've watered it down a bit just to avoid it drying as quick as it usually would. Um, and now I'm going to put it up here this time, flatten it down with my hand, just so that it it, all, it spreads all across. But you don't want to squish it down too much. Just want to make sure the main areas are pushed down. And then once it's stuck, I can just, because it's quite a thin leaf, I can just peel it back. Okay, and lots of detail, you can see, I've got lots of detail in one area there. So they're looking really good so far. So I'm going to try it out with this leaf now. I'm still going to do it in some gold, because um, I can try with my green, um, but I don't know if my green, unfortunately... Um, I might have to go to go and make it a little bit thicker. I don't know if my green is still a little bit too watery, unfortunately, which is a real shame. Yeah, it's too watery, so I will be back in a second. I'm just going to I'll go and get some thicker paint. So I've got some thicker paint now. Um, so I'm hoping that this will work. Fingers crossed that the green, oh, this is going on much better than it did before. Um, I just want to spread as much of the paint around. It can get quite messy, um, but that's what makes it fun, doesn't it? 
so spread as much as one so as you saw then i'd obviously put too much water in and i hadn't put that much in at all and um, so we've got quite old paints unfortunately that we have at home you have to just be really gentle and you will get paint on your fingers unfortunately oh it's going everywhere this one i'm just trying to turn it round so i can get it to the other side but it keeps moving about everywhere if you want to there we go so i've covered most of the leaf as best i can without ruining it okay so i now have to really gently pick it up um, and I'm just going to place him as best I can down in this corner here. And I'm going to just flatten him. Really flatten him down. Um, and I don't know, this might not come out very well. Or it might come out really well. We don't know. It depends on the paint. But it's all about just having a practice. Just practicing so that when we're back in school... Um, when we're going to produce our printing of the leaves, they look super. Oh, so there we go. We've got quite a bit of detail. Um, the, I can see here that I've put on too much paint. So I can tell that because there's a lot of excess paint still on the leaf. But also on my design here, there's quite a lot of paint still um, glue pin on it so I'll have another go again this time I'll put less paint on I'll put a thinner layer on of paint on this time there we go so I put this thin layer on, just like this, and I'm just going to place him here. And just flatten him down. It doesn't matter if they overlap. Okay, that's the art of printing, it will overlap. And then I'm just going to lift him up, and I've got a much nicer... A much more detailed print there because I put less on so it's always a good idea and hopefully you're doing this along with me and um, you don't have to watch the whole thing um, I'm just gonna do a stick for you so the stick the sticks are a lot easier than the the um, leaves you just need to paint like one side of it one side of the stick so that it's completely covered and then you just need to hold it down, brush it in, and then lift it up. And you can put your um, you can put your sticks anywhere, anywhere that you want to on your design. And you might want to. So there we go. So it's just a good to have a little experiment. With your thing so if you want to just pause the video here and want to have a little experiment i'm going to add some more prints on and i can show you what mine looks like at the end and here is my finished design so once you've created your design you can leave the video here because the next part is the alternative task for those who were unable to use the paint can't wait to see your wonderful printed artwork onto Seesaw. So our uh, task two alternative then, um, if you're unable to do the printing, which is absolutely fine, is use the items you've collected and you might want to get some more, is to make an outdoor collage. Um, you can use items to make a specific design. So as you can see the one in the middle, and um, they've used to create a peacock. 
or a turkey, whatever you want to call it. Um, or you could just stick down them down and see what it makes. So like the one in the left is not really specific design, but it's a nice collage. And they've got lots of colours in there. Um, you might want to felt tip colour in a leaf if you want to do some different colours. Um, or you might want to make like a bouquet of flowers. It's completely up to you, but using those resources from the outdoors to create a, a collage. So use inspiration from below. You might want to Google some inspiration. This is some brilliant examples out there. I know that um, year four did this um, in lockdown last time and um, different to us, they were creating some animals, but someone made a brilliant toucan, which is a bird sat on a branch and it looked brilliant. So unfortunately I can't find a picture for it, otherwise I would have put it up. Um, but if you do have any issues with this, please just let me know um, and I can't wait to see your work on Seesaw.